How's it going, everybody? All right, so I'm doing a Thursday edition of KO Podcast Home for the reason that I will be busy tomorrow uh, doing other things. And because I am doing these other things, I will... It's not like I don't have time to shoot like a 20 minute video of me driving to a place that I have to be, but I won't be uh, podcasting home. I'll be podcasting towards a meeting place where I'll be meeting up with other people to shoot other stuff. So uh, not really the uh, um, like time to be uh, shooting and all that stuff. And I want to use my phone for other things. And if I use my phone for this, my battery will die while I'm doing the other things. And I really don't want that. So I'm going to have a real camera on me to shoot stuff tomorrow, but there's going to be other things I'm going to want my phone for. So here we are. Um, I watched the, the beginning on Netflix uh, this past week, and I started uh, Sword Guy. And what I'm enjoying about uh, Netflix anime is... And I don't know if this is original content. Netflix has been billing itself as original content, but I know for a fact that, um, like, what happened with Kakegurui and all that stuff, um, the, uh, they've been taking stuff that is Netflix exclusive, stateside, and calling it original shows, but it's not. Uh, if you are good at torrents or good at um, simulcast the uh, that particular show came out way before in, uh, Netflix released it and like I think Gigook uh, pointed out in one of his videos a while back like uh, one of the main problems that Netflix has is that their model of releasing everything at once while it works for them uh, it's a pain in the ass for the anime crowd because diehards are used to having their shows uh, pretty much simulcast or day and date through either torrents or piracy or uh, like tuning into other channels uh, but that aside sword guy for instance and I've been putting off watching Voltron because I know it's I want to watch Voltron all at once and it's like the second part of a fourth or fifth season. I don't know what they're counting it as. And I don't know what they're building towards in Voltron because they've been pretty good about referencing the old series. Um, but something about, about Voltron I don't think people really know is that there were two anime series that went into making Ultron, or Voltron the, the first time. There was uh, Voltron with the lions, and there was like Voltron not with the lions. Um, it was two different uh, shows uh, cut together to make Voltron. So, I'm saving Voltron, but anyway, back to Netflix. Um, Sword Guy is... I don't, it's mature content, but it's adolescent mature content. It's not, um, like, it's not tits. It, it, it is violence. Um, there are some heavy themes in there. Uh, like, one of the things I have, like, I have in my head when I'm watching something is I'm watching, um, whether or not they're taking a deeper, like, a more... Like, uh, like, uh, science horror movies and science fiction movies. Like, like, it's very easy to say, oh, there's an alien. Oh, there's a monster. Oh, like, run, hide, uh, kill it. Like, those are the options. Run, hide, kill it. Uh, but the mature ones are like, okay, we have this phenomenon. But let's try to understand this. And let's try and solve the problem that it's that we're being presented with. Um, 
That's why The Thing uh, by John Carpenter is one of my favorite movies of all time because uh, it's about understanding that they, these scientists in Antarctica have a problem. Uh, they're presented with mysteries and like they, they abandon the mysteries because bigger problems show up. Um, and they have to figure out who's infected and they keep, and like there's heavier themes than that but um, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it is like like the level of intelligence and level of maturity that you need to uh, read and understand the concepts uh, that are being presented to you in the, like the kind of work that it is. Um, Alfred Hitchcock, if you watch uh, Psycho, the denouement is saved for pretty much the the very um, not the de denouement, whatever the hell the word is. That's like that's like three quarters of the way through, but right afterwards, it's like the uh, the resolving action, like they're trying to explain uh, Norman Bates, and it's just like the softest uh, pseudo uh, psycho babble. Um, like it's like go reference that scene. It's like they have like a, a like a criminal psychologist or a criminal therapist or a psychiatrist, whatever. Uh, and it's simplified, very simplified. And while Psycho is a great movie, like that particular uh, science that they used at the end, uh, it seems like uh, like quaint by today's standards. Uh, but. You see it on, on TV a lot. They only have so many so much time to explain uh, what something is. So, like, oh, psychopath. Oh, serial killer. Oh, okay. Uh, he does this. No definition. Like, throw in cliche. Uh, and back to Netflix. The science and the logic presented, I don't know if it's the, the, the dubbing or if it's the actual script, but it's uh, intermediate uh, at best in terms of... And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the show is about uh, guys and women and cursed swords, and uh, they all want to fight each other and kill, kill, kill. Uh, I think I got up to six episodes, and I'm enjoying it. Like, I never read any of the source material, so... But I read... I saw a B, and same deal. Uh, there's... A lot of, like... Scientific jargon going around. And you're not quite sure how it works, but... Like, I always liken it to, like, uh... Because it's a film, you're trying to create the atmosphere of this could happen more so than this is real. Uh, like this is like the fantasy you have in your head of, of what's going on. Be, like, like take my arm and shit like that. Uh, like I, I sprout wings and all that stuff. Like, uh, and the problem I had with B was. It felt like two plot lines that were just, like, uh, sewed together. More so than, um, things being a, a coherent front. Because you had one plot line going on, who just happened to have this plot line going on, and it was intertwined. But, it was done by Production IG, I think, and... Pretty much anything they do is beautiful. I mean, the the animation was good, crisp, uh, clean. Uh, some of the character designs were pretty interesting. Uh, I like that they set it in its own um, 
universe with its own rules and stuff like that uh, instead of like uh, just setting it in say Japan modern Japan or anything like that so th that was fun um, I read an article today about cultural appropriation and it was written by Mark Bernard of uh, like he's a comic book writer. He's, uh, I think the one that he referenced in his own uh, uh, article was not when monsters attack, but like uh, like Mega Monsters Attack or something. Like he he did a kaiju book in two thousand four, and he was bringing us up in reference to uh, Wes Anderson's um, Isle of Dogs movie. And I think he was bringing up the fact that Wes Anderson is telling a story about a Japanese boy who is uh, on an isle of dogs and all the dogs speak English and the boy didn't have to be Japanese. It was just pretty much like they, they wanted the aesthetic of it. They wanted, uh, but I haven't seen the movie, so I can't. 100% disagree with him, but I am going to bring up the points that he mentioned, and cultural appropriation, I understand where it's coming from, because like there's not a lot of like, certain things you think of, you realize that's not a genuine uh, thing, but like, Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai, or um I'm trying to think what's the other Dave Chappelle one. Uh, Tom Hanks in the last mm, on Earth. Uh, what else? What was the What was the other one? Oh, there, there was a third one that I shouldn't be remembering. But uh, so the idea of uh, white people doing um, Asian things or black people doing Asian things and stuff like that. But it's, they always bring it up when it's like white people doing stuff. And I understand it because I've seen so many like, like, yeah, this is going to be racist in a couple of years. Movies. Um, like Keanu Reeves as a uh, Kung Fu master or something, uh, stuff like that. Uh, Quentin Tarantino does these uh, grindhouse uh, kung fu chop sake uh, derived action pieces and those are the good guys like the the really bad ones are the, the ones that are bad actors bad directors and whatever but and they don't have like the nuance or the personal touch or uh, like the general uh clout to protect their film like I suppose there are guys that are really in love with a genre and that genre is race specific like um somebody wants to do a samurai movie okay uh while well, they grew up in Compton okay uh right so new director uh has no budget okay but the studio's willing to back him but they have to uh, do X, Y, and Z. It's got to be a love story. It's got to have uh, Kate Blanchett as the lead actress. It's like, okay, and the, like uh, one gay character is like, fine. And then there's just a million other little things that the studio wants you to do. Oh, we have suggestions on how you should do this. And while the love is there, it's in the recipe, um, the final product is garbage. Let, let's like it's a hypothetical movie it ends up garbage uh, the race card or the race issue in art is tough because I want to say that people should be able to create any story uh, any work of art that they want to. However, um, there has to be a genuine, um, like, or sincere reason for it. 
Hi. I'm trying to think of like a movie that really, really, really took uh, culture and just uh, trip minded because that's the word uh, uh, Bernard used and uh, took it, strip mined it, and and just used it as uh, like a not even a selling point, just like just because they could. Um, okay, uh, fast food uh, restaurants. Fast food restaurants when the uh, they come out with. Um, Szechuan sauce. That to me is not the issue, the, because if food wants to add new flavors, they can do whatever the hell they want. It's their business. But when they go to make the commercial for the Szechuan sauce, um, they really got to be careful with how they uh, uh, do it, because those commercials are where they go wrong. Uh, if uh, burger and chicken joint A uh, have like stereotypes uh, or not even stereotypes let's say they don't even do stereo like types but they do use cliches like they go to the Szechuan province looking for the Szechuan ingredients that will make the perfect Szechuan sauce and they just do it too seriously, like trying not to be something. And then it's like, it's like, come on, guys, we just want the flavor. We don't need uh, to be sold a bill of goods that you guys actually went to uh, China and found uh, the perfect ingredients for the sauce that we know is made in a factory somewhere. So, but here's my stance, and I'm just gonna schlub off the street. Uh, who makes his own stories, which are, uh, like, online. You guys can find them. Uh, I'll post the link. Uh, when it comes to a cultural appropriation, um, you gotta start with love, and if you don't start with love, then it's harder to defend. But you should be allowed to make whatever art you want. And I know that's not a popular opinion, but... If you have a story and you have a uh, idea for the story that like it makes it interesting to you, and I'm speaking to creators here, I'm not speaking to uh, consumers on this one. Like if you have a story that you want to put forward and it's like not your wheelhouse, go for it. Like make it the best thing you possibly can and uh, go from there. But just be self-aware enough to know that uh, be self-aware enough to know when, when you're stepping on other people um, because certain things like like if you do it like with no respect or whatever. Um, Thank you. <sighs> All right, here's one for you. Uh, old American Westerns, or not even old American Westerns. Like, I think a whole bunch of uh, uh, countries did this one. Um, you get to a, um, like, a Western with caricature-ish or your, like, a, uh, like, look at the depiction of, like, the Native Americans, which they're not even Native Americans. Like, look at the people of the tribes that are being depicted and like they're going for the facsimile they're going for the stereotype so just watch out for that like if it ends up if you create something and it's like painful for other people to watch like like deliberately attacking then you failed like it's not art anymore in the sense that uh there's a good reason for it it's just like an attack piece 
Like, I look at art the way I look at it at freedom of speech. So, like, take that as you will. Like, it, it's a murky uh, area. And uh, check out Mark Bernardin's uh, uh, article. I'll probably link that, too. Okay, goals. Uh, tomorrow, I am eating really spicy food uh, for Project Heat. So, I am going to post uh, something on that. Uh, just to give you an idea how much pain I'm in. Um, I'm going to uh, Wayne on Saturday to uh, uh, Zap Comic Con uh, 2. Uh, uh, God damn it, I gave up comics for Lent, among other things. So, uh, I'm going to. I'm only breaking that if there's something so, 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 something I want. And it will, it, it's got to be super odd, something I, something I know I want. Like, like if I see, like, uh, a trade paperback of the filth for $5, I'm getting it. So, all right. Uh, those are the goals. I'm going to... If it's not raining, I'm going to do uh, something for the running project, which uh, is going to be like something I shoot on Sundays uh, for just doing runs and all that stuff. Like one, like one course, uh, several laps, something like every Sunday. Uh, okay, peace.